hello good day i want to welcome you to data science uh, virtual bootcamp season two uh throughout last week uh, we spent a lot of time uh on the season one and then we invited world class expert to come and speak to you guys concerning data science deploying your model and some <laughs> interesting paper on covid19 also but moving forward we'll be we'll be moving on to season two and then uh, we've we'll been bringing also some experts from the data science team to come and share their experience, their knowledge with you guys. So, welcome to Data Science Virtual Bootcamp Season 2. Okay, so before we go on, I would like to talk about data science as a whole, what we do, who we are, and uh, what we are planning on achieving. And also, I'll be talking about some of our milestones going forward. My name is Demileke Onidude, and then I'll be introducing data science to you today. Okay, so who we are. So Data Science Nigeria is a registered non-profit organization. And we have a vision of building a world-class artificial intelligence knowledge, research and innovation ecosystem that deliver high impact and transformational research, business use application, AIFS startups, employability and social good use cases such that in 10 years nigeria will become one of the top ai talent knowledge destination with a 20 percent gdp multiplier impact so our vision simply is we want to transform nigeria economy with ai we want to use ai to increase nigeria gdp with at least a factor of 20 percent and we are not just teaching uh, you how to become a good software engineer. We are teaching professionals also on how to use AI in their business. We are teaching researchers on how to apply AI. And we are even uh, educating the government also on the impact of artificial intelligence and how best they can prepare for, for this great innovation. So these are some of the key uh, achievements we have for the past two years since we started we have close to 1 million direct downloads. More than 10,000 people have participated in our uh, bootcamp inter-campus machine learning competition. We have more than 12,000 people on our online courses. And then you can go on YouTube, search our online course, courses. Last two years and last year, we talked about introduction to machine learning. And then uh, I think for a period of 100 days, we are teaching machine learning online on YouTube. And if you feel like uh, your YouTube, uh, your machine learning skills needs improvement, go on our YouTube channel and watch that also. We have two terabytes of, uh, of uh, online classes. So you can go to uh, some of our cities and our campus, and then you can meet with, uh, meet with our city leads and get those information so it's two terabytes and it contains online videos it contains videos ai related videos it has data set in it and then also research papers you can meet with our city leads and we have city leads in 72 states generally and so we also perform uh introduction to machine learning in 30 cities and we train more than 5,000 students so these are some of our milestones for the past two years since we started and yeah these are some of the session segments of the kind of people we train and these are some of the programs we have for each segment we have for beginners we have ai wednesday introduction to python and for kids also we also uh introduce kids to python for and also machine learning and then we have put online and offline content for them so you can go on our website check it out and also we have uh, a book introduction to uh python and machine learning written by our founder dr bio and these books are very very uh, good for kids also and then we have and also we 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 have course, uh, course content for professionals and select level executive also people in government agency and we've worked with some of them in the past
So these are some of our trainees, and these are some of the pictures where we've organized the training. So we have AI uh, everywhere, a six-week class, and we teach introduction to Python, and introduction to machine learning. And these classes are all going uh, are going on all over Nigeria as a whole. And we've been able to organize these classes in 17 cities this year alone. Also, these are some of the pictures from the AI every everywhere six weeks class. And also, we have uh, uh, people in campuses. Uh, we have uh, people representing us in campuses, campus leads. These individuals are there to uh, accelerate our goals and our vision in the individual campuses. So in case you are in one of these schools, then you can meet with them. Just go on Twitter. Each campus has a Twitter link. Just search uh, AI Plus and then put the name of your school. It should pop up. Or you can go on our website to so we have information in case you want to join. And if you check here and you see that your, schools, your school is not represented, you can also reach out to us and then we can start from with you. Yeah, and then we'll be talking about our bootcamp too. Our bootcamp is one of our major events every year. We invite international and local experts to come and teach and train people in machine learning. And these experts are the top machine learning experts we have in the world. They'll be, they'll be with you for, for the next five days and then they'll be training you on machine learning and some of the latest innovation in that field. Yeah, these are some of the pictures uh, from last year. And then you can download our annual report also uh, for the year 2018 and 2019, and then see what we've been up to, and then some of the events we plan for this year moving forward. So now we'll be talking about our paid training for our business, uh, for people in the business world. So we've trained uh, executives, we've trained professionals in some of these companies, we we'll work with the Nigerian Army, we we'll work with Shell, and these are some of the trainings. We train them on how to use AI, apply AI in their field, and also we train them on how to best prepare for this uh, innovative technology that is coming up. These are some of our paid training data for business analytics. This is totally hands on, and these are some of the pictures. And then these are some of the projects our students were able to build based on the class. So the class is totally hands-on and then you will learn and have the best time with our season expert. So some of the trainings we'll be having going forward to our robotic process automation, we'll be having training on data engineering, in game theory and mechanism design, we'll be having training on data science for marketing. So here are some of the trainings we'll be moving forward. So in case you are interested in all this training, check our, uh, check our uh, website for more information. So before we move forward, we'll be hearing from some of the attendees of the past training, and then we'll be telling you how this training have best impacted them. Okay, so you can visit this link for more information on our online and our paid trainings. And uh, yeah, so, Let's move to today's class. Hello, um, good day. My name is Ben Lee Kenyon today. I'm a research scientist at Data Science from here. And today I'll be taking you through computer vision and also the importance of computer vision as a whole. And then I'll be introducing the two, a very, very important computer vision tool that has been very helpful to me and that's OpenCV. And then uh, basically we'll be talking about some uh, image man manipulation just with OpenCV alone. And then we'll go into object detection uh, using OpenCV. And then also uh, we'll go into uh, video manipulation and then we'll do some tricks with video. And then at the end of this class basically uh, you should be able to use and operate OpenCV 
and then you should be able to understand what computerization is and why you as a as a student or as a researcher or as the machine learning expert should pick interest in this field basically. So uh, for my slide here, you can see that computer vision is the field of studies uh, surrounding our computer see and understand digital images and video. So computer vision is just giving the system sight, even computer sight, giving them the basic understanding of what uh, our environment is. And uh, and that's that's one of the reasons why I'm very interested in this field because most of the technologies out there they they try to make us adjust to the system. When a new phone comes out, you have to learn how to operate it. When a new system comes out, you you check the environment, you check the features and things like that. But computer vision is computer observing our own environment. Computer trying to learn what the flower is, trying to learn. What does it mean for a human being to be happy? Uh, trying to learn how to work, trying to learn how to interact with our physical environment. There is no computer, there is no, uh, how like it? There is no uh, technology that has to do with uh, human interaction or that, that has to interact with our physical world that we don't need computer vision, basically. And that's why I think computer vision is one of the best fields uh it's still a very it's still growing because uh a lot of research is still on it and i think if anybody can crack those areas that would be the major milestone that will move artificial intelligence machine learning forward as a whole okay so uh uh i'll mention some of the examples of computer vision where they have been implemented what people have done with it. So, uh, number one is uh, autom uh, autonomous vehicles. Okay, so yeah, we've had a lot of artists um, uh, over the past five years. This field has really grown a lot. And then, basically, computer vision uh, is the one used mutually in this area because uh, the autonomous uh, a car. We have to understand uh, how does the car look like, how does human beings look like, uh, where is the road, uh, how far is this car from me, and all those things are done with computer vision. We also have image and object recognition. Yeah, we have uh, yeah a lot of uh, applications are the reason. If we have uh, YOLO. Uh, a lot of uh, object recognition model we have them build on cocoa data sets that can differentiate whether this is a human being, this is a car, this is a dog, and the rest like that. We also have image segmentation. Uh, image segmentation, uh, I'll be showing an example of image segmentation, just like segmenting different parts of the uh, picture and then uh, being able to see, okay, this part. Uh, whether it's a car, this part is the house, and things like that. I'll, I'll, I'll show you some of the examples here. And then facial recognition, we also have down too. And then we have robotics. We have robotics, and robotics autonomous vehicles are almost the same in application. And most of the computer vision technology that, will be, that have been implemented in autonomous vehicle are also being implemented in computer vision. Okay, so let me show you an example of image segmentation over here. Okay, let me expand this screen. Okay, here is an example of an image segmentation. You can see that the model was able to recognize the difference between the, uh, the skin, the background, which is this, and then we have the dress. So that's what, that's what you mean by image segmentation. And also, uh, let me see whether I have an example. Okay. So that is kind of an example of image segmentation. Um, when we were talking about self driving cars, autonomous vehicles, they fall under this autonomous vehicles, uh, self driving plane, and things like that. Okay. So moving on. Like the data sets that can be used for computer vision, we have images. Images are very common to us. Your 
your normal day picture, your selfie. You can be used to train a composition. We have videos too. Videos can be used to train composition, and this is basically what is being used for uh, uh, self-driving cars. So videos are just basically pictures with sound, a collection of pictures with sound. That will make it. Uh, then we have uh, leader, we have rider, and then we have photo sound. So, so light detection, which is lidar, and these are some of the new technologies that are just coming up, and then they have been attached to uh, a self-driving car or a robot, and then with the help of those, this technology, uh, a computer uh, can see like a three D map of the surrounding. And then there are a lot of theories on uh, on how this is possible. You can check online for it. I think I have an image of of a ladder here. Let me check. Okay, yeah. So this is an example of one. And then the difference between ladder and radar is uh, ladder are more good when it comes to bringing out the shape of an image. Yeah, they are very good when it comes to bringing out the shape of an image. Well, why is uh, radar good for short, uh, long distances? But they don't really bring out the shape of an image. But with radar, you should be able to, with radar, sorry, you should be able to uh, recognize that, okay, there's an obstruction here. You may not know what it is based on just the star understanding, but if you put a machine learning algorithm to it, you should be, still be able to do that. And then ultrasound is basically majorly used for checking distance. And here is simple application of them. So that's it. So and then all these all these different kinds of data set can pass into a machine learning model and then uh, they can be used to train a machine learning model. But today uh, we'll be focusing on just two kind of data set because of our time. And then because this is just like a basic introduction, introductory class to uh, open CV as it is. So today uh, we'll be talking about we'll be, uh, the two data sets we'll be capable, uh, focusing on will be image and video. And then uh, once you master this, moving on to the next to it will basically be, be easy for you. Okay. So. Uh, Okay, before I move on, let me show you how to download and install from Vision, I mean OpenCV, which is the tool we'll be using into your system. Okay, so, so you just open your command prompt. Uh, I'm, I'm, very, I'm, I'm very familiar with Anaconda, some of you may not know, but you can go online and just research it. So Anaconda is the very powerful tool and uh, very useful for when it comes to machine learning in the world and just learning new uh, software packages and things like that. So first, what I'll try to do is create a new environment uh, where I can install and store my open series. So I will say Conda, yeah. And then you uh, type the name, let me call it uh, computer vision plus. Okay. Yeah. And then we tell it to install Python. Python should be the uh, basic. Uh, programming language on it and then tell it the version to install and you know, click on it. Okay, so it's creating a new environment. So once that is done then I'll show you how to install how to install uh, OpenCV. OpenCV is a very very useful tool for me. It's is one of the best out there when it comes to image manipulation, uh, computer vision, 
is one of the best tools out there. And then also, uh, the Intel has been working as, uh, very well when it comes to computer vision and also deploying those model on edge, which uh, autonomous vehicle does. So uh, let's so let's change our uh, let's activate the environment under activate it. Uh, yeah, so let's flip on. Yeah, so oh, okay, so it's obvious. Okay, so now we are in our new environment. So to install uh, OpenCV, you just have to call pip install OpenCV and Python. So OpenCV has uh, another package for C++. And the reason for this is uh, C++ is very useful when it comes to edge deployment, deploying on uh, a physical hardware. Uh, any model that has to do with deploying on physical hardware, people prefer to use C++ for it because uh, C++ is faster than Python and very compatible with uh, hardware and other hardware, uh, other open source hardware that we have. Okay, so that's that. So so as simple as that. So let us call. Let's see whether it does work. Right turn. Okay. okay, import. Okay, so to import open CV because CV2. Yes. Okay, let's see. Okay, so in that we can see that our open CV is up and running. And then let's let me move back to uh, the code lab I'll be using. Okay, so I'll be using code lab for this uh, tutorial. And uh, code lab is, the, uh, is an online tool created by Google. And you see that it has a TPU, GPU installed for you free of charge so you can build your machine learning model there and without putting space on your personal system. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so let me change. Okay, sorry. Okay. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I'll be working from this directory based back. Okay, let me create a new folder so we can all follow along as I'm doing it. That'll be a new file. Okay. So uh, in Colab, all the tools like the uh, OpenCV has already been installed. TensorFlow has already been installed, so you don't have to worry about installation. Or what you just have to do is just start your code and start running. So I will import OpenCV as CV2. So you can see that's that's that, that's okay yeah okay so it's working but well, basically i like uh working with open cv uh, open cv2 as cv that just means basically i don't like putting it so so that's why i like working and then also i'll be uh installing mark talk to for my visualization of my code. Yes. Okay, so that's that and then let's start. Okay. Uh, okay, let me change the working. Okay, let me mount my drive. So another important uh, thing you can do with uh, cool app is you can mount your drive with it. And then that's like so that's like your external storage. You can put whatever you want to do on the drive and then just mount it with it. So let me, yeah, let me copy this. Yes. So, 
this is the diet where uh, all what I'll be needing will be all the data set uh, is on it. So and then the model too, they are on it. So that's where I'll be working for me, Johnny. Okay, so uh, let me check that diet so you can see what's inside. Okay, so I have my online class. Yes, I'm fairly sure. Okay, so you can see that I have a picture here named Dog. Uh, I'm a big fan of Dog, so uh, let's try and see how we can load our Dog image into our cool lab using OpenCV. So OpenCV has uh, a function called, called uh, MI read. So it's, you use it basically to read all your to read your image. So it converts your image from pixel to numpy array, and then from that your system can work with the numpy array. The issue is that your system does not understand uh, pixel and then the rest and then the data image you see. From that we test with numbers. So whatever you be passing to it must be number. So let's save it inside. Image. Yeah, let's create a game image and then okay, yeah. So that's that. So it's as simple as that. Loading an image to, uh, with OpenCV is as simple as as APC. So so let's see let's see what we have. Hold that. Uh, I mind your show. Yes, we can see our image. Okay, so uh, if you are thinking the image look a little bit weird, <laughs> you are right. So let me let me display what I have here and let's see what OpenCV gave us. Oh, sorry, yes. Okay, okay. So you can see that the, uh, the color is a little bit different, and that's because what OpenCV does is uh, instead of loading the image. Because your system, every system works with uh, loading your image as RGB. RGB. Let me. Yeah. Sorry, I'm looking for. Okay, yeah. So let me show you. Okay, so this is our normal image. All Every image has three channels. And then they are called RGB the red, green, and then the blue. So. Your red comes first, followed by your green, and then followed by your uh, blue. But what OpenCV does is it uh, it reverts this uh, arrangement. So instead of red coming first, it's now blue, green, red, blue, green, red. So you have to change that on your own personal system so you can so you can display the right color channel. And then moving forward to you have to change. That. So to change that to display the right color channel, all what you have to do is uh, let's call it image and say image because so OpenCV has its a function for that. It's called CVT color. So we pass in our image. Image is already loaded, uh, and then we pass in. This parameter of TCV dot color. color. Yeah. to how to do. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's close this so we have more space to work. Okay, so let's display what we have again. You can see that now we have the right color arrangement. So comparing this to this. 
So open CV what it does is once once you load an image inside, instead of displaying it at uh, red, green, and blue, it displays it at blue, green, and red. So you uh, you are the one that have to convert it and change it back moving forward. So open CV2 has a tool for resizing image. <clears throat> In case you want to resize your image and change the shape. And then this is very important because most machine learning model has uh, a particular shape, a particular size. When I'm saying shape, I mean size of image that they are trained with. So let's check the shape of this image. So let's check the size. So what shape? And then, okay, so you can see that this three years means it has three channel that we talked about which is the red green and then the blue and then here it's talking about the horizontal the width and here we have the height which is this okay so like but to resize it we just open cv also has a tool for the sizing cv to the size Then we call in putting our image, image, and then okay, let's plot this without saving it. Okay, let us plot it without saving it, and then okay, and again, sorry, we have to put in the size we want to recite it into. Okay, so. You know, we talked about we have the height, the width, and then the channel. So we are resizing the uh, height. So let's say our new height is uh, okay. Let's say two two four, and then our width. We we'll keep our width at five hundred. So let's display this and see what. Okay, so you can see that it has been resized. Oh, okay, so I got it the other way around. Okay. So the width, yeah, the width goes first, followed by the height. Yeah. Okay, now, so these are the size. They, they may look similar, but if you check the scaling here, you'll have seen that here we have uh, more, uh, more 1400, here we have 400. <coughs> so, I see that OpenCV have done a very good job in sizing it. And also, uh, I told you about the channel. So in case you want to split different channels, uh, OpenCV has the two core splits. Yeah. So in case you want to just display the red, the green, and then the blue channel, so you just got the image. We have so if so if you give us the red yeah the green so and then the blue so just as simple as that you can see that all these are very very easy so and to show and to show again, yes, so okay. So this is the third channel. Let me show you the green channel. So, yeah. The green channel, and then we have the blue channel. So You can go on and then talk about how different they are, uh, how they are separated, blah, blah, blah. But uh, because of our time, we'll, we'll skip that. We still have a lot of things to do. And then, uh, yeah, so today uh, we'll be using only pure uh, image manipulation to detect lanes on the road. Because that <clears throat> this function is very important when it comes to self-driving cars. If self-driving cars can determine, detect where the lane is, and when I'm talking about the lane, I'm talking about 
the white lines, the yellow lines that are drawn on the road. So that we know, okay, is this a one way? Can I overtake here? And then with all those lines, they can know, okay, this is a surface plane. I should move, this is where I should drive in, this is where the road is, and things like that. And then this is a very, very important tax in uh, autonomous vehicle self-driving cars in general. Okay, so with pure image manipulation, so when I mean image manipulation, without using any uh, machine learning model in general, just pure image manipulation, you will try and detect uh, the lines on the road. Okay, so let's have that. So I have a data. I have a data set here called okay yeah in the range okay so okay so in open CV no in computer vision generally if you can accomplish a task with uh, pictures doing so with videos will be basically almost easy let's just say easy in a sense uh, because uh, the most the basic step is images whatever you can turn in image you can replicate it on a video so let's start with image and then with from image we can move on to video and then you can see if the camera is attached to to a car and then it is recording the road i can detect the lens so we are starting with this image so we'll be doing yeah um, we're doing lane detection. Okay. Lane detection with uh, open. See. There are some machine learning models too that can that you can use for this, but if you understand open CV, there are some stuff you don't have to do use build a machine learning model for. And this will save you time. And also save your uh, computational resources because training and deploying machine learning model takes this takes a big ch chunk of your of your computational resources too. And then so okay, so let's start with loading the image. Let's let's call it line. Uh, yeah, line image. So as I've said before, to load an image, you just have to do CV dot. I am with so image and then we pass in the directory of that image. And because I've changed my directory, my working directory to this particular directory in the O, so I just have to call uh, what's the name? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I just have to call good image. So I'm calling root image. Yes. Okay. So also, I told you that we have to convert it to yes to RGB because OpenCV will not do down for us automatically. So, uh, so the code will be using for that is. So let us copy. Let's copy and paste here. Okay, so let's change this to this. And then let's display it so that we can see what we are doing. So this is the image we are working on. Okay, so from here we can see this line, this line, this line. So us as humans, we can detect line 
because over time we've trained ourselves to do to do just that. So we are going to build a machine learning model. Uh, sorry, we are going to use image manipulation to tell the computer to take those lines, and then so we can we can work with it. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is uh, do uh, do what they call HSC. So HSC is a uh, uh, is a two. So I'm going to use it on this image, and then we'll see. The output all these all these steps are just so we can achieve we can remove these noises these noises are the cars here and then we can have only these lines to work with and you understand okay so let's follow along okay so hsv image hsv online image how to be to each yeah okay yeah hsv so you can go online and check my about hsv so yeah we are just trying to convert from rgb to hsv and then let's plot it also to see what we are doing okay so all these things are just to help us get rid of the noise and then have Have only the line only. Uh, okay. Oh, so that one is going to be a show. Yeah. Okay, okay. So with this, you can see that uh, the line is still prominent, but most of the cars are already gone. So there are still a lot of work we have to do, and then from there, we have to uh, apply what we call uh, Gaussian blowing. Gaussian blowing is the noise reducer. Yeah? So it's also readily available in open CV. So uh I'm putting my Gaussian image. Yes. Okay, so we just call CV dot Gaussian. Yeah, Gaussian blind does that. And then we supply uh, three param three parameters into it. We have the so yeah, is that telling us SRV is just the part of where you have, want the model to be, and then the uh, kernel size. The kernel size for those people that are familiar with machine learning is just like uh, a boundary of bus drawn over your image just to smooth it over. Uh, you can check more of the tools. So I would I'll pass in my. HSV uh, image, HSV image, that's the image I'm looking at. The kernel size to be 3 3. So it will be 3 by 3 pixel. And then my, my zip map, I'm going to keep my zip map as 0. Okay, then let's so most of these tools I'm showing you, they don't have enough, we don't have enough time to go in depth into it. So if you have if you are seeing any tool that you are not understanding or you are seeing me supplying a parameter that you are not understanding, you can ask questions uh, on the comment section and then I will answer you. And also you can also do the side sheet and see uh what is this guy talking about and then we can read the documentation also okay so because we still have to do image recognition and then we still have to do okay so here you can see that most of all these dotted dotted line has been blown off so gaussian is 
very good for noise remover and then it's used a lot in uh, uh, what do we call it? It's used a lot in yeah in image preprocessing. So yeah, Russian to use a lot in image preprocessing. And also, okay, so now we have to get rid of every other thing that we are not needing, and then we just have to have only the lines. And then uh, then we'll be supplying what they call white, yeah. No. So these two parameters, as I want to create a range within my system that any image between this range, be, yeah, any color between this range should be should be saved. The rest should be turned to zero. This is very, very important thing for Remember, we have to be color channels, right? So we have to, for the low, I'll be giving it 20, comma, 0, comma, 180. So that's the lowest color range we want. And then the highest we want will be 255, which is the highest. Comma eighty, comma two five five. So even I'm putting two five five, two five five, two five five, or I will have, have pure white. But all these colors are also within the range of white. So I just want colors within this range to be preserved. The rest should be discarded, should be discarded, discarded, and then the two. So I'll be using for that CV, uh, CV2 has a bit, yeah, CV has a so called in range, so it will only preserve colors within that particular range. Any other color outside that range will be discarded. So we have max CV2, CV2 dot. Yeah, so I'm passing my my image that by this much in the Gaussian, and then I'm passing the yeah, I'm passing the low, passing the I. and then uh, yeah. And then let's plot this. Let's see what we have. Let's see what you complain about. Expected. So it has to be RV. Now they are in list. I have to make them to be in RV. So, so I have to. Yeah, what do I have to do here? I have to import NumPy. Yeah, so NumPy is a very powerful tool when it comes to RV. And I think it's very important when you're talking about machine learning. So we have RE, yes. Okay. So we convert this to RE. Okay. So yeah, you can see that all the colors outside this range are um, discarded. And then now we have only the lines and then the skies. 
So we still have the skies basically because it's within the color range we are uh, we are considering because the sky is white even like this the original image you can see that yes you can see that these places are almost white and then they have they are within this particular color range but here you can see that the here is almost like light blue so they are not within that color range we specify okay yeah so that's that okay so how do we get rid of this cloudy place so what we can do is just tell our model to focus just anything above this particular range you should not focus on it you should focus on anything below here so we can uh, specify it automatically or we can manually manually decide that manually specify them and but before we do that we have to do uh, edge detection and then to do edge detection numpy i'm sorry <laughs> google cv has a tool called cv dot cranny yeah so the very powerful tool when it comes to object detection you can detect the object within this this very particular image so we have we just copy this let's copy it this specify that inside uh, oh sorry Okay, so we have to specify the threshold. Let's specify two threshold. So let's go up. Okay, so for this particular line, threshold we have 75 and 150. So all these numbers are because I've uh, I've done a lot of trial and errors with them, and then I've gone online to, to search and check for them. So. Uh, if you see me putting on this number, it's not that I'm getting it on top of my head. I've done a lot of trial and error. Just because these tutorial videos, we are limited by time and also we still have a lot of things to cover. So I'm just I'm just inputting those numbers inside. So let's let's call this our canon. Our canon image. Okay. And then let's plot this. Let's see what we have. So I'm plotting after every anytime I apply any uh, any function to it. So you can see step by step, you can see what you are trying to achieve. achieve. So I won't just in a sense just give you a bunch of code and just then just see the final output alone. Okay, so it does max, not max. Yeah, you just see the final pattern. So what? Voila. So yeah, with this you can see that our work is almost basically done. Our work is almost basically done. The cars are completely, completely almost, almost gone. So all oh, we just have to go in the night, just the sky. And then for that sky, I've told you the best you can just you just tell. Uh, tell your computer to disregard anything above a particular uh, a particular point so yeah we can see that it can be created for us very very well so you can disregard dis disregard anything above here so we just focus solely on the ground because that's where our line is and that's where we are trying to uh, draw a line on it and then we're trying to draw a line on it. Okay, so uh okay, so let me let me manually let me manually specify where our system should focus on. Okay. 
Okay, so we have to decide the bottom left, the top left. So start from here, we have to find the bottom left, the top left, the top right, and then the bottom right also. So basically, we have to spend like this, 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 this. Okay, so, uh, yes, so. So we want to see okay, so we want to specify where we should focus on. So we are starting with the bottom left. So the bottom left around around five. Let's say five. Let's say five ten. And this is the bottom left. Yeah. So we have uh, the top left. Top left, this one be around like okay. let's say 350, comma. There's a code that will automatically do this for all of our letters. Let's, I want to try it normally and see if I'll be able to achieve it. And then the And then top right also. Oh. Okay. Sorry. This this should be zero. This should be zero. And then this bottom left. Yeah. This should be. So, okay, so we have the bottom left, the top left, the top right, and then the bottom right. Bottom left, top left, top right. So, top right, we have this. Uh -huh. okay. Let's try this and see if it will work. Okay, so we will see here the two. I will do this for us. I will see the two. That's cool. Only lines. And then we have a uh, yeah we have two in our image, which is this. Okay, okay I'll paste that and put it here, and then we we'll specify our vertex. Okay, we call it vertex. Let us call it B. specify true so it's closed it's closed indicate whether you draw only line are closed or not if they are closed the function draw a line from the last vertex okay yeah. so true and then we specify the color so the color you just Zero comma two five five, and then because our our image is a three D channel, so we'll be using that also. Let's 
Nossa. What this code does for us is it automatically detects where yeah, you should focus on and where yeah, not to focus on. Okay, so yeah. Okay, yeah. So yeah, we have the right line slope, the right line constant. So all this particular function have been uh, I've been gotten based on try and error as I told you earlier and then going online and then seeing what works and what does not work. So this particular code will help us get the bad text automatically. So before I was trying to just uh, eyeball it and see whether we get it but I was able to get that. Okay so let me come in Okay, let's run this. Okay. So yeah, we've done this. Yeah, okay, so not put the file. this now what's the issue oh see it so so this always happen normally sometimes so, so yeah so we turn this okay so so this particular code will help us get the area of interest that we should focus on and then what we are trying to focus on is the grand below anything above it should remove. Okay. So let's print and print this. Let's see what's inside. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's true. It's meant to be yeah, it's meant to be two numbers. Bottom left, okay, yeah, X and Y, X and Y. Okay, so, yeah, we are meant to get, based on this vectors that we've gotten, we are meant to get the, uh, we are meant to uh, erase from up, down. So based on this, so 29.54, so it will be around here, 29, 5, 4. That will be the bottom left. And then the bottom, the top right, 443, 10. So that will be around Yeah, that will be around here. So, yes. So, yeah. So, that's that. So, we are meant to erase anything that does not fall within that polynomial that we join, that polygon that we join, and then just erase everything and put the rest as zero as black. So we keep making this mistake. Okay. Yes. Yes, so just see. See, see. Yeah. Okay, and 
then let's so let's display what we have so so with this you can see that anything any uh image or any shape that doesn't fall within that polynomial that we've drawn get disbanded get turned to zero completely get turned to zero completely so we pick the polynomial it doesn't necessarily mean it must be a rectangle it must be a rectangular in shape like a completely rectangle it just have to be a uh it can be a polygon different angle and then to draw the line take those eight uh, aspects anything any other shape i mean any other yeah shape that does not fall within that particular polygon that we picked which is and on this side get tons to zero so with that with that simple trick we'll be able to remove the cloud and remove any other noise that we have so basically this we are we are as good as done here yeah. we are as good as done yeah so from here you can see that our line is already taking shape and then the last thing to do is uh Open CV as this particular function, and what it does is looks within an image eh, and try as much as possible to to get the lines within this image. Normally, if if I'm passing a raw image without me doing all the processing I've done, without me doing the uh, cranning, getting the edges doing the uh gaussian blurring to remove the noise it was this uh particular function or line will still be able to draw a particular line on the surface and this function is based on a particular mathematical uh mathematics uh a particular mathematical model so you can check online so let's do that let's check online So this, what you are seeing here, they are not machine learning models at all. They are just basic mathematical learning models. So this is the theory behind this. You can go over it, read it. You want to get more understanding, see? So it gets the line in an image. So we'll be using that to get, yeah, to get our line also. Okay, so that's that. And then all the functions that parameters are passing through here, all of them are based on try and errors over time. So you can change them, see uh, how they affect the, your outcome. And then here, I'm just trying to create like a max for this line. Just mp.0. So it just creates a replica of this image. Yeah, a replica of the original image, which is line. Yes. So we get a replica of the original image, and then we that's what the mp.0 does. Just, it just creates zeros of the replica of the original image with the same uh, shape, with the same height, with the same width. So that's what that one does. And then let's join our line. So let's see if we add two. See, see the dot line. And what this helps us to do is draw lines. Basically, as simple as that, as straightforward as that. Draw line, and here we are specifying the color. And then, if we check inside line, lines. Okay, so you can see all all this space specified both x, y, x, y axis, and telling where all our lines are. So here we are as good as done. Let me comment. 
coming down out from there yes okay so with this uh you can create a for loop to draw the lines using this and then you get this so that is how to do uh Lane detection using OpenSea without any machine machine learning model, just basic uh, image manipulation. We have been able to achieve this, and then all what we just have to do is just superimpose what we have already on our uh, on our image, and then we can do that one using CV add with, and here is the formula that it, that it uses. So it takes the initial image times a parameter called alpha and then add this line image that we have, this particular one, yeah, the line image that we have, and then multiply by another particular another parameter name alpha and then a bit beta and then with gamma. So it's just to superimpose what we have here on top of that image and then if we do that let's see what we have yes so you can see these red lines these red lines this red line so with that you can tell your uh computer system that I mean, your computer that is running this particular model that okay this is where the line is and this is where you should drive with you except you want to change link for a particular reason for you so just follow this line and then drive within that particular line. So this is the line detection module. Okay, so let's just go over it one more time. So, uh, and then if you have any, you should just ask on the group, a bit on the comments. And then uh, my email also is in leke at data science If you have any comment, you can send, send me that. Then you can create a particular function and just save everything inside. Follow this initial step, save it inside, and then you can run it through any video. I will show you how to do video with OpenCV, and then we can run it through any video, and then you should be able to get this same output. So you won't just have to be plotting it every time, just the first thing we load in our model, we perform, uh, we got the HS, uh, HSV with, uh, from the model. From there, we did Gaussian blowing, and then we, we told the computer any color that is not within this particular range, disregard them, disband them, turn them to zero. And then from that, we're able to get this. So we have, and then we are looking for a way to remove the clouds because it was white and then our link to is white. And then, uh, but before we did that, we, uh, we uh, uh, passed in uh, a function that determines the edges of the image. And then with that, we can able to just reduce the noise. All what we have been doing from the beginning is just try as much as possible to reduce noise, clean the image, uh, we can have what we have. And then here we're able to determine our region of interest, which is here, this area over here. So you can encode it, or you can run this particular code to determine the, uh, the area of interest. You can just tell your model anything uh, about this, I don't care about it, turn them to zero and then just leave anything below this. So that's what this code is doing. And then this is the uh, region that we we'll we'll care about. And then from there we perform a uh, pulling line on that region. And then we fill uh, anything that is outside that pulling line. We fill it with uh, this equal color. This is two, uh, 255 and then that's that 
and then you're able to see the output so every other thing has been filled up and what we have left is the lines and then well with this particular function we're able to detect the line even this function may not be necessarily needed but just in case because we've done almost all the work we've cleaned all the images clean all the noise and then we just run it through the all online and then we're able to get all the lines that's right and then from there we plotted all our lines on our max image and then we superimpose what we have with cv.add weighted on our initial image and then well you can see okay so that's about that on image line detection so we talked about using uh, OpenCV to do image manipulation, uh, image cleaning, and then the rest. So going forward, we'll be talking about uh, object detection. But before we go into that, I just I think I should discuss this function with you. So import look. Yeah. So, so load uh, is a very important function when you want to load multiple images at once. So here yeah, we'll be talking about loading single images at once. So here yeah, this function, what it does basically is, if I want to load load all the deep, uh, yeah, JPEG images in my download folder into my system, that means I'm going to manually uh, get the names or manually look for them just all the JPEG uh, file inside a particular folder load it up so this function you do that for you simple as a piece okay so moving forward we're talking about uh, object detection and then how OpenCV can be used for object detection so uh, this course is meant to assume that you already uh, have a basic understanding on how to build machine learning model. And if you not, if you don't have any basic understanding on uh, on convolutional network, uh, DNN, and the rest like that, I think we have previous videos that have, uh, we've discussed about convolutional network, building neural network. You can go over and check them out. So we will not be building any neural network here. What we will be using, we will be using a pre-trained neural network. So uh, I'm very, very, very comfortable with TensorFlow. And then TensorFlow has, uh, we can just type TensorFlow, TensorFlow model zoo. So we have a place where they store all model built with TensorFlow and then you can go there and download whatever model you want. So we have fax dot uh how CNA. We have different models that we train on different data sets. Okay, let's see the data set in train on okay. Some are trained on Coco, some are trained on Kitty, some are trained on open media data set, and then all this is just they are just there waiting for you to just download them and then use them so in case you want to build an object detection model to detect human beings you don't have to start from the scratch looking for data doing data pre-processing blah 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 like that you can just get the model from here that's for tensorflow so pytorch 2 has something similar to that chaos to us uh, so they are so different uh model architectures you can go online download the model see how they are being loaded and and then we can work with that okay so uh we'll be, we'll be going back to our coding section and here we'll be talking about okay, where open this yeah we'll be talking about how to use a pre-trained model and then loading it into 
So now we are moving over to update texture. Okay, so I'll be building, I'll be teaching you how to use uh, OpenCV with already pre trained model, and then so I can perform detection on that image. We'll be, we'll be considering both image and then video. And then at the end of this class, I should, I think I should be able to give a small tax. Yes, so we'll be considering both uh, image and video. So let's start with our image. Let's from CV2. That's CV. There we go. So I'm familiar with that. So uh, let's call our model tensorflow. So cb two dot dnn dot. So we want to read tensorflow model. So I've already downloaded a tensorflow model. I downloaded one from here. I downloaded single short detection. Yeah, I downloaded this. Yeah, one of this, and then it, once you click on it, yeah, you can download it, and then once you download, you extract it, and yeah, you are good. Uh, you are good to go to work with it. So. So I've already loaded it into my drive, so this is it. This, so yeah, these are what will be inside. But most of the time, it's a young potential from model, and this only particular potential from model, you will not see the graph.pd uh, text in it. So there's a uh, code you have to follow in order to be able to achieve that. And then this is the URL. So I'm going into this in detail. So you just have to, you just have to clone. Yeah, this is the code basically. Just clone this directory, run this code, and then to be able to get your graph, be able to get you this. We have the PD text. Mm -hmm. so, that. so we need two two parameters mainly. We need uh, your frozen in, uh, interference dot graph dot yeah uh, P, uh, PB. So let's copy this part. Oh, because we've already changed our directory to computer vision, so we'll be playing this one out. So my own, yes. So I've changed my own directory to computer vision, yeah, to this particular directory, so I don't need the rest. And then we'll be also be needing this copy part. Yes. And then we... Clean the rest because they're not needed. Okay. okay, yeah. So we've loaded our picture model inside. And then, uh, which image should we use? Okay, let's load. Let's load our dog image again, and that's how we can use it. So the copy image, let's see. Let's call it image because, image because, 
C to convert it to from blue, green, and red to to our Isla receiving yeah, so this so we have our image and then we have CD as color So we've loaded our image in and then uh, all it is is to create what they call a blob. So blob is just like uh, creating uh, an input data set that you can pass into uh, your model that you've loaded with OpenCV. You, you should know that it's the only OpenCV that you can use to load an already saved model. TensorFlow has a library for it. For loading a TensorFlow model, Keras also has a, mod, uh, a library for loading a TensorFlow model. But, but with uh, with OpenCV, OpenCV has for TensorFlow, they have for Torch, uh, and then they have for Caffeine, and then those are three I'm, I'm very familiar with. Okay, so we can we can call this. Uh, we didn't get the spelling of TensorFlow yet. Uh, let's, let's spell it out. Yeah. And so, and so let's do this again. So, let's of um, dot set into. Yeah. Okay, so you just see the two dots. Okay, no. Dot. Block. Block from image. So, yeah, so you can see that there are two block from image, block from images. But yeah, we are consuming only one image. So, so yeah, we just have to search like the image. Which is this? Let's define the size. Yes. Our size of uh, 300 by 300. Okay, so what is specify? Okay, so you can specify whether uh, you should swap it in this function. Swap out out B means instead of us uh, turning it from uh, RGB here to a bit from BG out to RGB. Yeah, so it's very much that I would do that for you because since we've already done it, we don't need to was doing it again, and then we don't want it to crop the image. So, cropping should be false since we, since we are resizing it. Okay. Cropping should be false. Okay, so let's. Okay. Oh, sorry. That's a blue one. Okay. So. You specify the model, all what you just have to do now is just make a prediction 
So we can call our output. Yeah. And then call our module. Instance of this appointment dot forward. Those are called forward. And then just like calling dot predict for those who from now with uh from now with uh SK lane or test of the model and things like that. So with this one we should be able to get So what's the issue here? Okay, I need to go to this one. Okay, so we've set our input. Exercise. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. Capital letter H. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, I think now we should be able to. Yeah. So now we've set our model and then everything is set. So all what you just left for now is you now just copy this code so we can move fast with it. Yeah, copy this, this, and this. So what you are doing is just looking over the detection and then yeah. Yeah, Okay, so yeah, we are looking over the detection, looking over to see what it and what our model has detected. So um, for, whatever, for whatever it has, okay, let's take the shape of this. Okay, when I'm saying the shape, I'm saying okay, let's take the size of that array for output. Okay, so from there we can see that there are 100 detections, and then for each 100 detection, there are seven parameters. The, seven, the first one signifies the uh, the uh, image ID, the second one is seven, the second one signifies the, uh, the threshold, no, the class, sorry, the third. Um, parameter signify the threshold. That means how confident the model is about a particular detection. And then the last, the, the remaining signal, signal where the model is on the picture. So is it on the top left corner, provide the X and the Y parameter, and then that's that. So here, yeah, we're talking about the our threshold. Let's say any any prediction that is below 0 0.8, we don't we don't want them. And then that's that. So let's display and see what we have. Oh. Cool okay, so oh yeah. So we have to specify the the rows and the columns and the channel for our model. Channel. And then we can do this to just email dot shape yeah need a shape to do this first yeah. so yeah we also need command here 
I think we are good to go now. And yeah. So from here you can see that our model was able to detect our dog. Very nice for people by the way. So from here we can see how to load the pre-trained model. To load the pre-trained model, you need these two very important parameters: the frozen inference dot pd, and then you need the graph pd dot text. Most TensorFlow model, especially from the side I've showed you, does not come with this graph. You have to follow this code to generate it from your configuration file. And the configuration file from yeah yeah from this pipeline dot configuration. And it's very simple to use, just call that code, run it, and then specify the parameters it asks you to specify, and then to automatically generate it for you. Easy as ABC. And then we set, once we load our model, we load our image, we set the input, we call the forward, and then we run the detection. So this is like the complete code. All working together, running together. So this is everything, and then this is the output. So yeah. So lastly, we are going to move on to videos, and then this particular video. Uh, let me let me play it for you so you can see what I will play both what you are trying to achieve and the video. Okay, so. From here, you can see that we have, okay, we have a video of people coming into a particular place, checking the particular document for a period of time. So, what we just embrace and want to detect human beings, humans within this particular uh, videos. I want to do a branding box and then, so at the end of the tax of this one, we should have something like this. So we should have something like this. Okay, maybe my internet is bad. Okay, so we should have something like this. So over the particular uh, video, our model will keep detecting humans and then keep drawing bounding box around them, and then that's what we have. And then whether moving forward, this can be your personal project. You can determine uh, how long uh, a person spent in, that, in the video, how many people came in, uh, how long they spent reading the document, and things like that. Or things like this can be used for uh, customer service, for security purposes, and, um, and so on. But the, the model will be building here with really a very, very simple one. A very simple one at best. And then we would already done most of the work with uh, with the pictures. So I'll just show you how to load in image and the videos and then how to work with videos. So Okay, so moving forward, we're talking about how to work with videos, how to load videos in with OpenCV, and then how to uh, detect images. Okay, so to start the video, all you just have to do is CV has the function called CV dot. Yeah. Video capture. And then we will specify. Yeah, we we'll specify the videos we want included inside. We we'll specify the path, and then this is the video that we'll be using that I showed you earlier. It's called include. 
equal to that n before okay so from that uh, so we've captured it and then that will check whether if we captured it right and then so we'll be using cv dot uh, sorry cap dot open and then we specify the sorry, we specify the directory again yes specify this again and then yeah so we have the state now we have the frame Okay, so I would I will explain this to parameters shortly. And then read. Okay. Let me point it here to help. Uh, let me point state. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Queen. Let's call it frame. Is it a frame? Yeah, frame. Okay. Frame dot shape. Okay, so what we are just trying to do here is. Okay. So the state will tell us whether what we inputted, the, the video, whether OpenCV was able to load it. So if it was not able to load it, it will return false, but now it was able to load it and it will return true. But for the frame, what the frame will return will be images. And this is what you should know. I told you earlier that videos comprises of images. And videos are just image, collections of image with sound. That's what the video is. And in video, they have you have a particular, uh, a particular pan that they call frame per second. So, uh, so that's that. So frame per seconds can be 30, can be, can be as low as 10, and then can be as high as 60 also, or 50, 60. So what these uh, values are just telling us that, they are like 30 images per second in that video. I mean, if the uh, image run for uh, three seconds, I mean, the total number of uh, images we have will be 30 times three, and that will be 90. So frame per second means numbers of images within a particular frame. It's as simple as that. I mean, within a particular seconds, yeah. Number of images within a particular seconds, and then we we can iterate over those particular uh, frames. So if for every time you call cap dot it gives you the, the next frame, successive frame like that. So that's that's as simple as that. So frames are just images taken from the video, and then the number of frames in the video depends on the frame per second of the video. Once you know the number of frames in a second, then you should be able to know the number of images in that video based on the length of the video. So that, that's the trick. And then from the, that, this should really help us in building so uh, okay, so moving forward, we can get the width. Width and the height of which frame and we do this. We have Let me increase my brightness of my screen. 
I see what on this side. So that don't get to to give us the yeah, give us the width and four will give us the height. Just uh, for creating new videos, and then we are creating another video. We are putting out, yeah. Keeping in this directory, just to create new videos. Uh, just like copying a old video, creating a new video. That's what seed, seed the video writer is for. So we are familiar with this already. Here we are just loading our model that we use for the image so to open a, a video with open cv you you put inside a wide loop and the reason for putting inside a wide loop is so to be able to iterate all, all over the phone because you can't specify the, the amount of frames that is within a image is that you loop over it and wide loop is good for that without knowing the amount of frames it will loop over it and this is the condition that it will be monitoring cap dot is open and then f per frame so it reads every successive frame with the first frame second frame third frame fourth frame like that so this is what will help us iterate over every frame and here we'll be checking if it was able to successfully read the next frame and there's that and yeah, so now we are no longer dealing with videos again. Within this while loop, we are dealing with image. So most of what we did for our image, we repeat here. Yeah. So this key waiting just to, in case you want to quit it, uh, that's another talk on another day. So we put in, get our detection, and then draw the bounding box and then you can and once you are done we release always remember to release release and then destroy the window always remember to do this okay so that's that and then we can run this yes. and then once it's done loading and we'll see the output which is this this particular one and then that's that okay so yeah it's going to take some time okay, so we've been able to achieve a lot today we'll be able to do 
talk about uh, image manipulation, they really talk about object detection, both for images and then for videos using OpenCV. And then also, so what I would like for you to do is I'm going to drop this video. Sorry, uh, is yeah, okay. So I'm going to drop this video in the comment section, just eight seconds. So we've worked with the image. So whether once you get done, whether you want to practice what we learned, try as much as possible to replicate what we did for the image for the videos. Just know that videos are just images with sound. And then once you are within this wide group, sorry, there's a window. Oh, sorry. Once you are within this wide group, you are no longer dealing with the video game. You are just dealing with successive images. And then you just have to run all the code that we ran for detecting the line. Here, you don't need the model, you don't have to run the model because there's different functions that we want to can create a function for all the ones we run, we run, sorry, and create a function for them, and then just put them inside the white book, passing the uh, initial image, and then what will be returned to you will be the output, and then you can write it inside a new, yeah, yeah, write inside a new uh, video, and then you should be able to build uh, in, in function that it, that detect the lines within uh, within an image. So uh, I hope you you be able to enjoy today's uh, today's class, and I and I want you to go over and just learn more. So here are some of the links you can go check on to learn more. You can you can search, especially this link yeah yeah it talks about the state of uh self-driving cars technology in the world in general so if you are very interested in autonomous vehicle and you want to know what's going on so yeah so this is a, a very detailed report stuff like that so you can and if you're having any problem, you can email me at bimleke at datascience.ai or you can contact me on Twitter, Leke on at, yeah, at Leke on yes, and then I'll be able to answer your question. And, uh, if you're able to do this project of the lane detection and the videos, and then you want to share it, you want to write the medium post, you can send me. Just send me the link so I can check it for you, uh, the code, and then I can check it for you. So thanks guys, have a wonderful day. I'm looking forward to the good we accomplish with this. Bye.